Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're going to dive into a report from Headset on understanding the seasonality in cannabis sales. We're going to find out who's buying cannabis, what they're buying, and when. On the line with us is Dan Kimmis with Good CBD Products. Hey, I dialed the wrong number this morning and somehow ended up in this podcast. That's, that's good fortune right there. Yes, I feel lucky. So this report examines trends that are based on time, looking at sales by month, growth by month, sales by day, and even preferred purchasing hours by generation. It'll provide some insight into the times that various customer groups come in, organized in terms of categories by demographics, and it'll be useful uh, for retailers and producers or anyone who's interested in not only who's buying cannabis or what they're buying, but also when they're buying it. So obviously weekends are huge sales days. Fridays and Saturdays remain the most popular day for cannabis sales overall. However, they demonstrated in recent reports that the uh, demographics for younger generations exhibit a stronger preference for products traditionally associated with partying. So Gen Z, millennials, they love concentrates, for example, while the older generations gravitate towards a wellness adjacent product. So the theory is given that further support by seasonality data shows products more specific to regulation enjoying more sales on weekends while wellness adjacent products sell better during the week. I know friends that, you know, that are attorneys, for example, they go out after uh, work on a Friday, grab an edible, and that's their, their vice, that's their thing. Um, but I, I do understand that during the week, if you have um, ailments that you need and, and it's a wellness product, you're going to be using that every day. Yeah, it's funny, right? That kind of data is so handy from things like a staffing perspective and, you know, when to have who in the shop to help, you know, like uh, when the old people show up, when I show up, right? That kind of stuff. I dig it, man. Yeah, definitely be there three to five. I think that might still be a huge um, portion of sales. It used to be a third of all edibles sold between the hours of three and five on Friday. But looking at this next graph, the big picture. So the broadest way to understand seasonality in cannabis is to look at month over month sales figures. So in terms of total sales, the trend is slow, but steady growth. So as would be expected for a new market. So there's some spikes like in June of 2018 in California when regulatory change caused a mass sell-off in product, but otherwise it's pretty smooth. California began to grow more rapidly lately, which could have to do with the fact that it has a huge market potential and also coming out of this initial period of regulatory chaos, but across the board, sales are growing. So looking at California, Colorado, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, huge spike in, um, in California, like they said, in, in June when everyone needed to get that product off the shelf, taking advantages of you know, regulatory issues like you got a $15 one gram vape pen when they had to get that stuff right off the shelf. And we saw sales spike in, in vape pens as a result of that, too. Yeah, California has been very interesting from a learning perspective, brother. So I'm in California right now. I'm working my way back north. But one of the things that's been particularly, oh, I guess, poignant is the very same fight we saw with the black market, except it's worse here. The black market's deeper entrenched, and the tax rate and the, I guess we'll say the costing burden is higher here on the retailer. So I think it's going to take them longer. I really do. Mm -hmm. Well, they're already at 200% more than Washington for sales in September of 2019. Uh, Washington reached 100 million that month, whereas California exceeded 200 million. I mean, they're just, they're, they're crushing it, but obviously that's the fifth largest GDP in the world. So there's, there's a lot of uh, sales opportunities there. Well, and I've been buying a lot of weed down here, brother. Well, you're helping out. So thank you for your contribution. I'm doing my part. Oh, California. Looking at the peaks and valleys, there's um, a slightly more interesting picture of monthly sales emerging when you look at month over month sales growth. So there's, we see consistent sales spike year over year along with matching slumps. And so summer months with June, July, and August are consistently strong performers as would be expected. I find this graph kind of interesting because it spikes somewhere around like March and March 17 had a huge, huge uh, increase. And then again, March 2018, March 2019. So everyone is selling a ton of product the month prior to 420. Yeah, it's an interesting three-year three year chart kind of what I think 20% more sales uh, front-running or front-loading uh, product in advance of 420. We can see average daily sales by month over the past three years, we see some consistent trends, but the fluctuations are definitely tighter than 
uh, with total monthly sales growth. Summer still does well, but we see that with most serious slumps in October and then the downward trend line for most recent data in September 2019 indicates that there will, that will be the case again. February, after you adjust for the disadvantage in total days, is actually a strong month for average daily sales growth over January. So it's month over month, average sales is all over the map. Um, but it's, it's interesting. There are waves and valleys. This kind of goes up and goes down. So working for the weekend. So the takeaway from this next chart on unit volume by day of the week. So people are getting ready to party for Friday. Friday enjoys the highest you know, sales volume across all five markets measured, uh, followed by uh, Saturday. So in Colorado, Saturday actually sees slightly higher sales than Friday, indicating perhaps a more carefree cannabis loving spirit. They partake in a whole weekend long. So given that Colorado's always had higher sales per capita among legal states, the statistics make sense. And besides that, they see Saturday and Monday are pretty dismal for sales everywhere. Alberta actually has a decent showing on Thursday. Maybe they don't work on Friday up there. Kooky, right? There's actually like um, subtrends, different cultures, mm -hmm. right? Gosh, if, if you're from here, yeah, we don't do that on the weekend. Right. We, we go buy our weed on Thursday. But if you're from over there, yeah, yeah, I get up early Saturday morning and run down to the weed store. Yeah, you're going to sell one and uh, you sell 20 percent more product uh, on Fridays just right off the bat. So I kind of like looking at, uh, you know, restaurant volume, you know, when people are there, when they're not. And so headset provides a, a similar chart here for busiest hours. And so looking at uh, sales across all possible hours for cannabis shops. So there's regulated differently state by state and they see some clear trends. So there aren't many people buying cannabis at 7 a.m. Um, with the exception of, of me when I'm in uh, Amsterdam, coffee shops hate me because I go super early. Uh, but 2, p 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. is a sweet spot for most sales. Colorado of the three states or provinces shown have the highest proportion of morning sales, suggesting that consumers are perhaps more comfortable with buying cannabis at hours of the day when they don't plan to immediately consume it. This could be a representative of a shift of thinking away from a more novelty item to something more like a staple something like better grab an eighth for later. Nevada sees a lot of that sales happening in Las Vegas. They have the highest percentage of sales from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m., which shouldn't surprise anyone. Alberta has no sales from 7 to 9 a.m. because retailers can't legally sell it until 10 a.m. God forbid your stoner gets up early and goes and gets his weed. Right, 3 to 5 p.m. Is, is the hot hours. I always want to go before that. Like I said, I'm, I'm kind of up early, go get my coffee. All right, looking at category sales, looking at pre-rolls on Friday, they sell a lot more uh, than Monday. You're looking at tinctures and sublinguals. They kind of sell fairly steady, kind of like we, we talked about in the beginning, spiking on the weekends. Maybe somebody's looking for a recovery. So as the report mentioned above, looking at category sales by day of the week, they really drive home the wellness versus a recreational narrative in the cannabis industry and take a look at two categories most closely associated with each and compare their day of week sales. Pre-rolls unsurprisingly perform very well on Friday and Saturdays, which makes a lot of sense given that they're almost exclusively used for recreational purposes. Tinctures and sublingals are a category that's much more associated with wellness cannabis and beats out pre-rolls on boring old Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and even see sales on Saturdays. So pairing the data here, they see the upcoming uh, slide on who shops when and makes the general divide in wellness and recreation even more clear with, again, Fridays seeing a lot more sales, actually. For tinctures and sublinguals, you're seeing, what, 4% more than you would on a Monday, Tuesday. Not a huge increase. <laughs> They're going to get really granular and break this down by the hour. Uh, but ultimately, you see that pre-rolls have even more sales in the evening, suggesting that they're for relaxing, partying, or immediate consumption, whereas the tincture sees sales earlier in the day, tapering off to almost nothing late at night. People definitely want to get their, their ailment re remedy early. So who's shopping when? You kind of see this graph. Baby boomers and the silent generation have a higher proportion of their sales in the morning, while millennials and Gen Z show up significantly higher rates around 4 p.m., uh, maybe they have jobs that could be a result of it. Not really sure. Or the older generation feels more empowered to be able to leave during the day and go get it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Hey, where's the boss going? I don't know, but he always leaves at this time. Okay, Zoomers. So looking at the weekly sales for the opposite 
ends of the age spectrum, Gen Z and silent generation see a corroboration for the wellness recreational theory. Gen Z customers are doing a significantly higher portion for their shopping on Fridays, Saturdays, while the elderly are spending rates uh, is drastically higher Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Fridays is particularly hot for Gen Z, which is pretty indicative of a generation with a party mindset. So key takeaways, cannabis market is definitely seasonal when it comes to sales, although it's not necessarily a holiday driven. So we've seen reports on holiday trends. They have a profound effect on sales, but this trend tends to be absorbed by other days in a month. So that said, certain categories do better based on seasonal trends. Pre-rolls will perform well in summer. They're popular for hikes and beach days while edibles do well in December. If everyone's already eating sweets all season long, they might as well get a special one. Summer's great for sales growth, so efforts to bring new customers or run big specials would be the best uh, money spent there. October's not ideal month for new customers. Fridays and Saturdays are the biggest day for sales overall, but those sales are definitely driven by specific products. Customers shop the most during the peak hours of the day from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., but especially between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. Happy hour is a thing. The dominance of the weekend sales is driven by recreational products, while medicinal products do better during the weekdays. Medicinal products also do better earlier in the day on any day with higher sales from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. than their recreational counterparts. So these preferences match what they think about generational preferences from medicinal to recreational products as younger generations shop later in the day while older ones have their bright and early the same is true of day of week sale demographics, which have young people spending a lot of Friday, Saturdays, while older generations spend twice as much as Monday, Tuesday. So Headsets partnered with Nielsen. It'll be interesting to kind of see their, their barbecue and cannabis report that they do in July, which kind of shows uh, more of a normalization. I want to see the difference, what other people are doing during the week um, and kind of compare percentages uh, on a Friday of, of alcohol consumption versus a Monday, for example. Um, but all in all, I mean, it, it's starting to, to show some decent trends. I'm just interested in to see kind of more and how that's normalizing or compared to, to other industries. Yeah. How do you get the headset report? What do you do if I want to, if I'm just like a normal human and I want the headset report, what do I do? Go to headset.io and then click on industry reports and then you put in your little information and then out spits the, the report. You can download it and read it to your heart's content. Well, that sounds pretty good in between now and the next episode of The Talking Edge. <laughs> they got some good blogs, some good stuff coming out. I uh, always like diving into the reports and seeing you know, what kind of cannabis is being purchased, who's buying it and when. So you want to check out headset.io or just come back to the talking hedge. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is the talking hedge. By the way, if you enjoy the content, please show your support with the cushy gesture of $4 and 20 cents a month on the talking hedges, Patreon page. This will kind of help me spread the word. I've been asked to speak all over the world uh, from Toronto and Colombia, Spain, um, Miami, all over Tokyo, but your support's important to me. I haven't monetized the podcast. I want to be as authentic and transparent as possible. I want to avoid conflicts of interest uh, or even the perception of paid opinions. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe or pay me on the Talking Hedges Patreon page or don't and I'm out.